Okay, so we've covered the cerebrum. Now let's look at a mid-sagittal view of the brain and look at some other structures. So this wrinkly part up here we already said was the cerebrum, so that's your thinking brain. The ridges were called a gyri, the grooves were called sulci. Now your cerebrum is connected in the middle by a structure of white matter here called the corpus callosum. Now, in case you missed it in any of the other videos or notes, let's take a quick side note here and just mention that white matter is basically primarily just myelinated axons. So knowing that neurons come together with dendrites and axon terminals, if I just have myelinated axons here, this is just a relay station, a relay signaling structure. Gray matter, and it doesn't matter if you spell this with an A or an E, will be all the other parts of a neuron. So that's going to include cell bodies, dendrites, unmyelinated axons, uh, axon terminals, and of course my synapses. And our supporting cells, the neuroglia. So when I talk about the corpus callosum being white matter, we're really just talking about relaying information. We're not talking about making those connections that we do in the gray matter. So let's clear that out and start again here. So we said that this structure that connects the two hemispheres of the cerebrum is called the corpus callosum. This area under here, which is actually pretty large, is called the thalamus. And the thalamus is kind of like an old school telephone operator. If you've ever watched shows set a long time ago where they have like the telephone operators with all the cables like maybe a show like Mad Men or something like that. The telephone operator is taking information coming in and deciding where it needs to go. And that's what the thalamus does. So the thalamus is a relay station to the cerebrum. Right in front of the thalamus is a small area here called the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus makes two hormones, which we will learn about when we get to endocrine system, and it helps to control autonomic nervous system functions. So it does ANS functions. Remember, ANS involves things like digestive and urinary and so on. This hypothalamus is connected here by a little piece of white matter called the infundibulum to a structure that makes a whole bunch of hormones. So it's connected to this large gland called the pituitary gland. Now the pituitary gland is known as the master gland because it makes hormones that often regulate the release of yet other hormones. And you will learn all of the hormones that the pituitary makes when we get to endocrine system. So you will not need to have those memorized for now. You just need to know its general function and 
where it is. This structure in the back here is called the cerebellum. It is a pretty interesting structure. Most of the books are going to tell you that it helps you with fine motor skills or skilled motor activities, things like that. So think of these as motor skills that you learned, but you no longer really have to think about to continue performing. So walking is a good example. You had to put a lot of thought into how to walk when you were a toddler, but you don't really think about how to move your legs and balance your body so that you can walk anymore. Playing the piano or any other instrument, playing sports, um, doing emergency medicine, these would be kinds of examples where you're doing a lot of rapid motor skills that you're not having to think about in order to perform that specific function anymore. Now, most books focus on that function for the cerebellum, but there's some pretty recent research out that shows that it may actually be helping the, the uh, cerebrum, the frontal parietal lobes, to actually do their functioning but we're still learning more about that. There's a small gland tucked right back here, right behind the thalamus, called the pineal gland, and it makes a hormone called melatonin. Now you may have heard of melatonin, or you may even take melatonin. You can get it over the counter. It's a hormone that helps to regulate and set your sleep-wake cycles. Or your circadian rhythms. So melatonin is released when it starts to get dark outside. So lack of light causes you to release melatonin which is why in the winter, when it gets dark at 5 o'clock in the evening, you're exhausted by 6 o'clock. But in the summer, when it's light until 10 o'clock at night, you, the kids are bouncing off the walls until 10 o'clock. Now, all of these structures up in here are part of something we call the diencephalon. And everything below that here, from here down, is part of something we call the brainstem. Now there are three parts to the brainstem that you need to know. This upper part right here that has a little channel running right through the middle of it, so it's kind of like a donut with a really skinny hole in the middle. This is called the midbrain. The midbrain helps us with eye and ear reflexes. So those would be things like being able to focus in on something or constrict your pupil if it's too bright or the startle reflex when you jump if there's a loud noise. It also helps us with consciousness And it plays a very important role in, t in helping to smooth motor skills from the cerebellum. So Parkinson's is associated with damage to the midbrain. Because if you think about somebody with Parkinson's, like Michael J. Fox, for example, instead of having nice, smooth motor skills, you might have something that's very jerky and they have trouble grasping things and dropping them because they're having difficulty with the cerebellum kind of making those motions nice and smooth. So the cerebellum creates those motions and the midbrain smooths them out. This part of the brain stem right here is called the pons, 
and his primary function is relaying information to the cerebellum. So as sensory information comes up, it says, oh, I already know how to, make, how to do that activity. The cerebellum will take over. And the last structure that we have right down here is called the, what I like to think of as the Adam Sandler part of the brain. It's the Mardula oblongata. And this may be the most important part of your brain and definitely not a part of your brain you want to damage. So the medulla helps to keep you alive. So it's going to regulate things like heart rate, uh, blood pressure, respiration, and then reflexes that keep you alive like vomiting, coughing, sneezing. I like to think of those as the get it out or keep it out reflexes. So if you damage your medulla, you are most likely going to be dead. Now one last structure that's on your anatomy list that you can see here is this white matter going through the cerebellum. So you see these little kind of tree branches here. Those are special white matter called the arbor vitae, which literally means tree of life. And if you think about it, it looks like bare branches on a tree. So that's your tree of life, and it's the white matter of the cerebellum. Now, if you've been following along at all on your anatomy list, you'll notice that the only thing we haven't really covered yet are the meninges, the olfactory and optic nerves and tracts. And we did cover the ventricles in a previous video, but we didn't show you where they are, say, on a model. I will be doing some other videos that will walk you through these structures on one of the brain models and demonstrate where those other structures are located.